Hello folks, Matty Brockhurst here from Brockstone. Hope everyone's good wherever you are, whenever you're watching. So on this video, we're going to be creating something quite unique uh, into a small space in front of someone's pro property. It's only about two square meters, but the client wanted something different, something special. So bounced a few ideas around and we came up with a pattern that was going to work within that space. We had to adapt it slightly, but it was a pattern we were both happy with. Can't claim to have designed the pattern myself. It's just a geometric pattern that I found. Uh, so there was a bit of jiggery pokery to make it work. But what's the process? And hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy it as much as I did. Well, sort of. <laughs> so this is the pattern that we started with. And there was a bit of flexibility as regards to this dimension. This was fixed, obviously, between the, the wall and a wall. But here, we've got we have the flexibility of moving it back backwards or forwards uh, because we could adjust the depth of the step within reason. So I was going to do this idea first and stop here and do like a different detail across the front. But when I looked at that, that's a the whole beauty and the idea of drawing something out that for me that pattern doesn't work cut off there it needs another segment at the bottom to replicate it to make it symmetrical a symmetrical length and width so that's when we decided to increase it another row here and keep the border all the same the way around so i've done my calculations on paper i've cut my templates for the size of each individual square now i'm just going to work out the pattern cut it down and away we go There she is, our template. Hopefully the real thing will look a little bit better than that. There we have it. All our cuts marked up. And a nice cup of tea. Nice cup there, isn't it? Got that from uh, Nuki a few years back. So, yeah. Marked up, ready to go. Let's get cutting. Right people, we're ready to go. So I've got still TS410 with a Pulvex diamond blade on. Got me earmuffs, got me goggles, ready to cut. I'll put the choke on. Just on the time lapse, halfway through, I stopped. Well, I start. I started cutting with the uh, continuous rim blade on one wizard, and then it was struggling a bit with the granite. It wasn't cutting that fast. 
So I just got the other the other wizard out which had the segmented blade on. So I, I used that uh, more of a general purpose blade, but that ripped through it a lot faster. So I cut all the granite with that, and then I, when I was on to the slate again, uh, I tried the segmented, but it was fracturing the surface a little bit. So I went back onto the continuous rim and used that. It's good to give you sort of a bit of a break as well when you when you come for so long. Uh, so yeah, I, sw I swapped over there. So you see all the off cuts there. Is the ice cream man just in time? So uh, it took me two and a half hours from start to finish to cut all that. Obviously on site there might be a little bit of additional. Well, there will be a bit of additional cutting around the edge depending on what border trimmer I use, and also uh, if I do a detail at the front. But yeah, that's the main body cut and ready to lay. So this is the little area we're going to be paving. As you can see, the base is already be, already being cast by someone else. It's a little bit up and down, to be honest. Uh, so we need to, before we start, we need to reduce this side a little bit so we can get the paving on. Because we don't want it to come up too high on this edge. Just testing for square on this as I'm setting out. So this side here is square with the step with the house. But this wall on this side is 20, 25 mil out. Uh, so it splays out this way as it comes down. So what I've decided to do is keep the pattern right in uh, the main body, but cut this border flag on a taper and then your eye won't stay see that your eye will just look at the pattern and it'll be lost within the border so that's me plan with that so what i'm doing now i'm using my templates so the original ones that i've checked to check every one of these cuts that i've made and just check that they're bang on a lot of them are but some of them just need like a milli or so just nipping off so I'm placing it on top, using the sharpie, drawing along, and then basically whatever is left on there, I'm just nipping off with the grinder. So I just want to stop for a sec and show you the the cuts close up that we're laying here for anyone doubting that the the cuts we've made with the wizard still so are good enough you can see that nice and close absolutely no chipping or shelling on that and that's what they're all like occasionally you might lose this point when you're cutting but if we do that we just discard it and cut another one but that's that's very rare. Most of them are cut right first time. And then we're just sanding them down using these little polishing pads just to get that nice finish on the edge. These are from Stonecraft. And we're using the 400 on this. This is this one. So I've got the spacings there. I've worked out the gap either side. So I've cut some more strips down out of slate and there to go around the edge. So I'm going to slurry the, slurry the base because this is a concrete slab that's in. I'm going to slurry that and then I'll put the semi-dry down and also slurry the back as well. So everything's stuck as one. my
These are all a two milli joints, even right the way through. So the grout we're going to be using is Mafi Ultra Color Plus for the step in a Manhattan grey, which is available from Screwfix. I know that works well with the granite, hence that's why we're using sticking with this map eye and then for the main body we're using the fusibella number 11 which is quite a dark dark gray 